guys, I'm gonna wash my makeup brushes, clean them out. I recommend doing this pretty regularly because they can accumulate, obviously, crusty makeup, but bacteria it can lead to little skin infections. So I have a few of them here. I find this to be very laborious. So on Amazon, I went a look in and I decided to give this a try. It's a makeup brush cleaner. It's just like a little gyrating thingamabobby with little silicone fingers to get the brush. So I thought I'd give it a try for you guys. It was like under 20 bucks. And I also got some makeup brush cleaner. You certainly can use like a mixture of Dawn dish detergent and whatnot. You don't need something like this. So I thought it'd be fun to test out for you guys. All right, here's what it looks like. There's an on off button. You can leave it like that to just spin around. It's kind of is giving me Patrick Swayze ghost vibes. Anybody else? <laughs> um, <laughs> it says to add water and cleanser until the container is half full. Push the button to turn it on, then gently press down the brush let it spin around and then rinse the bristles clean with water. Okay. So, jeez. Oh, and I'm not gonna fill it too full because they were kind of suggesting that on the reviews not to do it too full. Um, and I'm just gonna do, there's not many, there are many instructions on this wash. I think I originally saw this at Target in one of my Target videos and you guys were like, yeah, definitely get it, it's good by echo tools which my brushes are they echo tools no my brushes are elf i have one echo tools brush anyways so let's give it a go i'm gonna do my dirtiest one it's probably this elf eyeshadow brush i really like this but as you can see i really like this brush but as you can see it is in need of some attention Ew, cool. Getting all the crud out. This is nice. I imagine something like this would work maybe too for artist brushes, although don't quote me on that. I'm not, I'm not a watercolor artiste. Yeah, makeup brushes certainly can be a source of acne um, breakouts because you're kind of mashing them into the skin. And if they're, they haven't been cleaned regularly, the oils plus bacteria get caught up in there and can lead to acne breakouts. Those beauty blenders are notorious for harboring little unwanted microbes and they're really difficult to clean. This gizmo says you can clean your beauty blender with it. Wow, check out how clean that is. It's a pretty good job. Here's what the nasty water looks like. You can see the pearlescent shadows glistening in there. I'm gonna give this brush a rinse to get any of the residual brush cleaner out. But that looks clean. I'm just gonna lay it down here on a white towel because you don't wanna, you don't wanna leave them upright like this. The water will drip down <clears throat> and mess up the glue. Oh, <laughs> helps if I plug it back in. This one I don't use too much, so it didn't have that much in there. Clean as a whistle. Let's rinse her out. Let's do the mineral powder one next. I love the, ooh, a lot's coming out. I love those little grippy brushes. They really give you something to hold on to. This works really well, but I have nothing to compare it to other than just a cup. All right, that's clean as can be, but look how grody the bronzer water is. <laughs> I've had these brushes for over a year now and I've been happy with them. Elf is pretty inexpensive, but they've held up well. And next up is the fluffy eye blender. And we also have the detail crease brush. And we 
have the small precision brush. Look at that. And last but not least, I have this um, Real Techniques blush brush. I've used exactly two times with my new NARS orgasm blush I got in this past FabFitFun box. So I'll go ahead and give that a cleanse. Got all of the blush out. It's just the right twerk. The bowl is just the right size. And I love these little grippy things on the bottom. So I would definitely recommend this. I can store it pretty easily. Just turn it upside down there. All clean. here at the Polish Harvest Festival. I have my San Diego Hat Company hat on. It rolls up, but it's good because it fits over my bun. Adorable and earrings too. <laughs> She wins a prize if she doesn't let go. Check out the Polish food store. There's lots of chocolate. Ooh, that looks good. Mm. Horse radish. Hot mustard, different greens, 
millet. Pickle paradise back here. These look at the like really good ones. Hot ones. Oh, it's hot outside today. Sauerkraut. All right, so I just hopped out of the shower. My skin is still damp. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna show you guys how I've been using the um, May Love Fade Away. I'm actually almost finished with this. Anyways, um, so first I'm gonna come in with the Timeless Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Uh, too damp skin, just like three drops. I find these high Timeless Serums are easy to spread on the skin. You don't need a ton and you're done. So a bottle of these will last you a good long while. Now, as a reminder, this has more than hyaluronic acid in it. It has um, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a stable form of vitamin C that may or may not do anything. And it also has matrixol, um, two peptides that may or may not do anything, but ultimately at least improve hydration. Anyways, so I come on in with this first and it's a very thin serum. And then over that, I'm gonna do Shake First with this May Love. Check out my review of this. Um, and I'm gonna do an entire dropper's worth to my face and neck. This one's a lot thicker, so that's why I'm putting it on over this. And I find I can tolerate it taking it up to this area, but that may not be the case for everybody. Okay, and I've been using this at nighttime. I explained why in that video, because during the daytime when I come on over with sunscreen, I get some pilling with the sunscreens, um, and I just find that this is working out well for me. Okay, so you can come on over with another moisturizer if you like, and I'm gonna do that, because I do find that this May Love product if you let it dry on there as is, <clears throat> it dries a little filmy, sticky, tacky. So I just go ahead on over it with, I'm doing the Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Face Cream. So these are, this is a lot of different products, not necessary. Like, you know, it's not necessary. The only reason I'm doing this, using this many products is because I reviewed the Timeless Serums for you guys. I wanna use them up, I'm liking them. And I reviewed the May Love product. Um, and I'm liking it and want to use it up and they can be used together, no problem. But, um, you know, if you're using the May Love serum alone, you probably will get some of the similar benefits just in terms of improvement and hydration that you would get from like the Timeless serum, although you won't get the um, Matrixol, but we, st we don't even know if that does anything. So, you know, choose your own adventure is what I'm saying. But I'm a big advocate of fewer products is much better it just simplifies things anyways all that to say i'm using three different products to just moisturize my face um okay take a little here and there and i'm just gonna let that set up i'm gonna moisturize my body with the um equate version of cerave cream i have here um i've been loving these equate dupes to the generics anyways so I'm going to do that and I'm going to get dressed and then I'm going to put on my tretinoin because the moisturizer and everything should be absorbed, dry, and it'll be a perfect time to come on over with tretinoin. All right, boom, just like that, I'm all dressed, moisturized from head to toe. Check out my face. Like, I'm telling you, this fade away brightening serum, it really does brighten up the skin. Um, I think it's, like I said in the review video, mostly through the humectants, just kind of scattering light. Um, it's got kojic acid in it, which can help in um, inhibiting uh, the enzyme tyrosinase. So it reduces upregulation of pigment production, also antioxidants. It has arbutin in it, which is a natural form of hydroquinone. I don't know, let me know what you think if you've tried it, but I think it, it really does a good job brightening up skin tone. If you've got some residual 
uh, freckles, age spots that darkened over the summer with UV exposure, and you're looking to lighten them up, I do think that this will help. Likewise, the tretinoin will help. And yes, you can use these ingredients along with tretinoin, or if you're using a cosmeceutical retinol, you can use that, um, or you could use a dapolene, I mean, any form of vitamin A. However, with the caveat that, you know, the more ingredients that you use, the greater the risk of irritation. So just be aware of that. Like if you're starting tretinoin for the first time, I would not start it alongside this serum. It could be too irritating for you. But me personally, I've been using tretinoin for a couple of years now and you know it's not an issue so i'm just going to come in with a pea-sized amount and you see my skin it's clean dry and moisturized so i the tretinoin you know should be a little less irritating in that regard um, Tretinoin, likewise, will help with clearing up existing hyperpigmentation, lightening uh, sunspots, solar, otherwise known as solar lentigos, and it will help kind of exhibit some synergy with those ingredients from the brightening serum. Provided you are doing what? wearing sunscreen and protecting your skin from UV rays. And if you if you have hyperpigmentation too, remember the blue light component um, from visible light, iron oxides may protect against that as well. So that's especially an issue if you have a deeper skin tone. Speaking of iron oxides, I reviewed for you guys, it should be up already, the Elastin Hydro Tint. That's a tinted mineral sunscreen. I've gotten a lot of requests over the years to review. I finally gave it a go and I don't know. I'm getting maybe I'm getting to be too snobby when it comes to tinted sunscreens, but for the price point, I don't know. I was kind of underwhelmed. I gave it like a three out of five. I'm not bad, but I don't know. Not worth it in my opinion. One thing I didn't care for about the Elastin product too is like the packaging kind of leaks all over the place, um, and so that's annoying. But anyways, yeah, that should be up already. So that's how I use the Maylove Brightening Serum plus the Timeless Serum, which again, you don't need to use all of these things. I'm just using them for reasons I explained. Um, so that's how I use them at nighttime along with Tretinoin and my moisturizer. Pretty simple. Anyways, you guys, I hope you had fun with this vlog. Man, that Polish festival was a ton of fun, but it was hot as can be for some reason today. It was super hot. I mean, September is kind of like our teaser month, I find. It rains a lot and it'll be like, cool randomly one morning and then it's back up to 100 degrees so you get a little comfortable and then it's like <sighs> that's how today was it was hot and that store i'm really glad i got to go in there they had a ton of neat stuff like a bunch of cool pickled stuff so that's one thing i love about houston it's like super diverse internationally in terms of representation different cultures all over the place uh here and we always have like a lot of cool little shops to go and purchase international things specific to a given country so um, if you visit here from another country and you're homesick we'll probably have something for you from your home country but it's a fun place to live and exist i'll say that provided you drive defensively <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.